Hello, welcome to the introduction to A-Level Music presentation. My name is Mrs Alford and I'm going to be taking you through this. Um, but first I'd like to introduce you to the rest of our music team. We have Miss Williams, who's head of music, and Mrs White, who's our other music teacher. And the three of us will take you through the A-Level Music course over the two years that you're with us. We also have Mrs McArdle, who's our music administrator, and the four of us are really looking forward to welcoming you to the music department in September, whether you're an existing internal student uh, who's coming back to study A-level music with us or an external student who's joining us for the first time. It's going to be great to meet you all when we start things in September. Uh, so let's go through some of the opportunities that we have for you as a musician at Cooper's. Uh, there's loads and loads of things for you to get involved in. Uh, there really is something for everyone. So whether you're a jazz musician, a pop musician or a classical musician, um, we have lots of clubs and extracurricular activities that you can get involved in. Um, all of these things really will enrich your, your A-level music course and help you contribute to the wider life of the school, which is always good to put on your personal statement. Um, we also have lots of trips and concerts and events that we run on a yearly basis. We have our music festival, uh, we have a summer and Christmas concert, um, we have biannual trips abroad where we take our senior, senior ensembles on tour um, and we go out to London and different places in the community to perform as well. So there's lots of things for you to get involved with. Okay, moving on to the A-level music course itself. Uh, it's split into three main components, performing, composing and appraising. So if you studied Edexcel GCSE music, those three components will be really familiar to you. And this course is laid out in a very, very similar way. Um, if you've not done Edexcel GCSE music and you've done AQA or OCR or EDUCAS, um, then that's fine. I will take you through this and hopefully it all will become clear. So let's start with performing. Um, this is worth 30% of your A-level and it's submitted as a piece of coursework. And you record this in April 2022. Okay, so you have to perform in front of at least two people. And uh, the two people that you'll be performing in front of will be me and Miss Williams. And you get to record your piece or pieces um, as many times as you want until you're happy with it and until we're happy with it. And we will only submit the best performance as your coursework. You do uh, get to do a performance in front of your friends and family and peers as part of a recital evening, which we use as your mock performance. And also over the course of the two years, we do several performance seminars in class uh, where I get to give you lots of feedback on how to prepare for that final recording in 2022, uh, which seems a long way off, but it will come around super, super quickly. Um, if you're a multi-instrumentalist, you can do your performance uh, on more than one instrument, uh, not at the same time, uh, but for example, if you play the guitar and the piano, you might decide to do one piece on the guitar and two pieces on the piano. Um, you can, it's really up to you, okay? And you can also do a combination of solo, ensemble and improvisation, or you can stick to doing a whole performance as a solo or a whole performance as an ensemble. Whatever suits you is absolutely fine. Uh, the performance itself must be a minimum of eight minutes. Um, and that means the music is eight minutes long when you add up all of your pieces together. You can by all means take breaks, especially if you play an instrument that requires a lot of stamina, uh, like a woodwind, a brass instrument, or if you're a singer. Um, but the actual pieces of music we will add up and we need to make sure that they add up to at least eight minutes and no longer than 12 minutes is what we recommend. Um, in terms of standard, we recommend grade six plus. Um, if you can play a piece of music that's even more difficult than grade six, so a grade seven or a grade eight piece, you do get marks for difficulty. Um, so it'd be great if you could perform a piece of music, which is grade seven or eight standard. Uh, so get practicing. Okay, the second part of your A-level is composing. Um, and this is also worth 30% and it's also a piece of coursework. Again, it's submitted in April 2022 and you submit a total of two compositions. One is set by the exam board um, to a brief assessing compositional technique. Essentially, you have to compose a piece of music in the style of Bach and uh, what we do is we harmonise Bach chorales. OK, and then the other composition is completely free. OK, so you can write your own brief or actually the example does publish a set of briefs that you can use as well if you're not sure what to do your composition about. So they're your two compositions and the total time across both of those compositions must be a minimum of six minutes. 
Uh, we use Sibelius in school to do our compositions. If you've not used that before, then that's absolutely fine. We'll teach you how. Once you've got the hang of it, it is a really, really good resource that we've got in school to use because you can see and hear uh, what you're composing. Okay, and then finally we come to appraising. This is worth 40% of your A-level and this is your exam. Okay, so the exam is two hours long and you're tested on your knowledge and understanding of musical elements, contexts and language. So again, if you did uh, Edexcel GCSE music, you'll be aware of this term set works. Okay, and a set work is essentially a piece of music that we study if you've not heard of set work before. And we have 18 that we study at A-level and they're split into six areas of study, which I'll go through on the next slide. Uh, your exam is split into two sections. Section A, you have three questions related to the set works, followed by a melody and rhythm dictation exercise where you're played a short piece of music. Uh, the beginning and the end has been written down for you and you've got to write down the bit that's missing in the middle. And then section B, uh, you have to write two essays. So the first essay, which is the shorter of the two, asks you to draw links from one of the pieces of music that you've been studied and apply it to a piece of music that you've not seen or heard before. So you get played to this unfamiliar piece of music, hopefully that you've not heard before, although if you have heard, have heard it before, that would be good. Um, and you're expected to apply your knowledge of one of the 18 uh, pieces of music that we have studied to this unfamiliar piece. And then the second essay, this is the big one, uh, you get a choice of three questions asking you to evaluate the musical elements, context and language of a set work whilst relating it to wider listenings. OK, this term wider listening is really, really important. OK, so this A-level music um, course really helps you with a broader understanding of music. OK, we don't want you just to go away knowing loads and loads of stuff about 18 pieces of music, because that's not what being a musician is about. There is a really big emphasis on pieces of music that were influenced by the works that we study or that went alongside them and that have lots of similarities between them. So it does give you the course does give you a wider understanding of music and how it's developed over time rather than just memorising facts about 18 pieces of music. OK, so. Here are the pieces of music that you'll be studying over the two years. OK, so we've got our 16, sorry, our six areas of study on the left hand side. We've got vocal music, instrumental music, music for film, pop and jazz, fusions and new directions. And you have three set works within each area of study. OK, so there really is something for everyone here. So there's lots if you like classical music, if you like film music, if you like pop and jazz. OK, there's loads and loads and loads of stuff here. For the purpose of keeping this presentation short and sweet, I'm not going to go into detail about all 18 of these set works, obviously, because it takes two years to go through all of them. Uh, but... I'm going to take you through uh, something that will mostly relate to these highlighted set works here. OK, so we're going to everything that we go through today um, will relate to the highlighted pieces. So we're going to look at Bach, Mozart, Vaughan Williams, Vivaldi, Schumann, Berlioz, Portman, Debussy, Cage, Sariaho and Stravinsky. OK, so essentially, if we were in school we would be doing this uh, as a card sort activity. Unfortunately, that's not how things are going to work. Um, so feel free to pause this at any time because I'm going to show you what I'd like you to do. Pause it and try and get you to do the card sort without the cards, which sounds super confusing, but here we go. Um, we're going to be focusing on four areas of music in those boxes there. Okay, so we've got romantic, classical, baroque and modern. OK, and we're going to be working out the musical, historical and cultural features of each of those eras. It's important that we look at the musical aspects of each of these eras, but also that we appreciate the influence that history and culture have had on the development of music and the decisions that the composers made. So, as I said, feel free to pause at any time if you want to test yourselves before I reveal the answers. Um, if anything, this should at least give you an initial understanding of how music has developed through time and hopefully this will help you making the step from GCSE to A-level, okay? So, these are our four eras of music. They're not in the right order and we've got a timeline in the middle. You may already know the answers to this, um, but if you don't, use the fonts to help you. So, where do you think each of these eras belong in the timeline? Okay, so feel free to pause now and I'm going to do a countdown for me revealing the answers. 
three, two, one. Okay, so here are the answers. Medieval and Renaissance music, we don't look at at A level. Okay, so we'll ignore those for now. Um, Baroque music is our first one, and that was uh, 1600 to 1750. That was the Baroque era of music. Then 1750 to 1820, we had our classical era, followed by Romantic in uh, 1820 to 1900, and then 1900 onwards, we have the modern era. Okay, so what you can actually do, I've been very clever here, and I've changed the fonts of each one. You can see that this Baroque font here is very old, it's very detailed, and it's almost handwritten as if you, as if it's been written on a plaque or something in a church. Okay, and that's going to be really important going forward. We then have a very basic font for classical music, and then a really sort of italic, beautiful um, font for romantic music, and then that really block sort of modern font for our modern era okay so the next thing we're going to do is look at the historical facts okay so i've reminded you up here what the eras are and the years that they lasted for i'm not going to patronize you by reading out each of these points but i want you to try and find three historical facts that fit in each of our eras OK, and try and bear in mind the fonts that we just saw on the previous page, because that might help you a little bit. OK, so feel free to pause. And I'm going to reveal the answers in three, two, one. OK, here are our answers. So those of you who are really into your history, you might have been able to work a lot of those out. Um, there is one key fact from each of these that we're going to bear in mind for the rest of this presentation. OK, so for Baroque music, I want you to bear in mind that the monarchy was obsessed by detail, decoration and grandeur. For classical, I want you to bear in mind that the monarchy was this time assessed with simplicity, balance and symmetry. For romantic music, the obsession with beauty and for modern music, advances in technology. OK, so I want you to bear in mind those uh, historical facts that belong to each of those uh, musical eras going forward because it's going to help you with the rest of the presentation. Okay, I promise we will get on to music in a minute and all of this is relevant, but we do now have some buildings in front of us. Okay, so again, I've got a reminder up here of the different eras of music and I want you to remember those different features and characteristics that we just looked at and see if you can remember or work out, sorry, see if you can work out which building belongs in which era okay feel free to pause and I'm going to give you the answers in three two one okay here we go so if we remember back to the historical facts the baroque monarchy was obsessed with detail decoration and grandeur OK, so we've got a building here, the inside of a building. It's golden. There's loads of detail. It's 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 heavily, heavily decorated. OK, so there's a big clue there. The classical building, it's incredibly symmetrical. It's very, very basic. Um, it's balanced and that very much represents the music as well, which was um, composed at the time. Then moving on to our romantic building, it's beautiful. And that's not to say that the Baroque building isn't beautiful and that the classical building isn't beautiful. But if we look at the sort of arched shapes, OK, and there's lots and lots of different beautiful things going on. These domes at the top, it's very, very different. OK, exaggerated as well is a good word that we can use. And finally, we have our modern building. OK, no one would have been able to make a building like this in the 1600s, 1700s or 1800s. OK, so it's because of the advances of technology that this building has been able to be created. OK, so hopefully you got those right. Next, we've got some composers here and there's three composers in each uh, era of music again. So you need to sort which three composers you think go in each era of music. OK, you may already know some of the answers based on what you've learned at GCSE or think about if you've played any pieces by these composers and you know what era they fit into. If you're not sure, have a look at the actual picture as well. Does the picture itself give you any clues? OK, so feel free to pause. 
And I'm going to give you the answers in three, two, one. Okay. So how on earth could you have worked that out without me telling you? Let's have a look first at our modern era this time. Okay. These three pictures all have something in common. They're all photographs. Okay. Photographs didn't exist in the Baroque era. Uh, cameras didn't exist in the classical era. They started to become popular in the Romantic era, and we'll come to that in a minute. But look at the clear, the clarity, the clearness of each of these pictures. Okay, so it's quite obvious that these pictures of composers belong to the modern era. Then, if we take a step back, okay, we do have some very, very old style pictures um, in black and white again of our Romantic composers. Okay, we've also got a female composer in here as well. So there are romantic composers. Then if we look at the Baroque and classical pictures, these are all paintings, okay? They couldn't have their photograph taken, so they had to pose for their painting for their paintings to be done. Okay, and we've got this really sort of fun hairstyle that we had in the Baroque period. Okay, so Bach, Handel and Vivaldi, they all had this really long judge style hair. Okay, they were wigs. Um, and then when we got to the classical era, they had sort of shorter, more cropped hair. Okay, showing the way that sort of men's fashion was going as well with shorter hair. Okay, so it's quite interesting, not only that these composers um, all composed the same style of music, they all had the same haircut, or they all had their pictures taken, or paintings done of them, so all of these things developed at the same time. Okay, so this is all about relating music to the historical context as well. Okay, finally we're on to some music. So, I've got 16 musical features listed here. And bearing in mind everything that we've learned so far, you need to sort four musical features into each uh, musical era, please. Uh, again, I'm not going to read them out for you. You can pause this and read it yourself. And I'm going to go through the answers in three, two, one. Okay, so Baroque music, extremes of dynamics constantly changing keys, highly ornamented melody and busy polyphonic textures. Hopefully you can see how these things are all related to that detailed decoration and grandeur that we discussed about the building that we saw in the Baroque era. Okay, classical music, we had clear memorable melodies, simple homophonic accompaniments, obvious structures and gradual changes in dynamics. Okay, so this clear memorable melody, obvious, basic, simple, all of these words, if you remember back to that classical building, uh, then that makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so the buildings, uh, the architecture of the time reflects the music of the time and vice versa. Okay, next we have our romantic musical features, expansion of the orchestra, dramatic contrast, virtuosic solos, dense textures. Again, we can see this beautiful building. Music was becoming more of a beautiful thing. Okay, not that it wasn't beautiful before, but people were taking time over making sure that music sounded spiritual um, and expanded and dramatic as well, just like the building. And then finally, in modern music, we had a lot of rule breakers and experimental composers. Uh, so we've got no clear melody, heavy dissonance, experimental timbres and extremely detailed performance directions. OK, so very, very different. And this building is very, very different and very, very experimental. OK, so this all shows you how these things go hand in hand. It wasn't just a case of musicians um, changing and developing, but also history, architecture, architecture and um social context as well was moving at the same time okay so here's where we would actually be listening to some music if we were in school um, I'm going to have to trust you to get this onto YouTube now instead so I've got four pieces of music here um, hopefully you will recognize at least one of them um, and I want you to listen to them on YouTube and I want you to see if you can identify any of those musical features that we've just looked at on the previous slide and attribute them to the piece of music and therefore work out which piece of music belongs in which era. Okay, so you'll need to pause this now, go onto YouTube and search up these pieces of music and decide which one you think belongs in which era. And I'm gonna go through the answers in three, two, one. And here are the answers. 
Okay, so listening to the Baroque music, the Vivaldi Concerto in D minor for two violins and cello, you will have heard lots and lots of ornamentation, you will have heard lots of key changes, okay, so those musical features that we just looked at on the previous slide. Mozart's Eine Kleine Nacht music. Um, this is a very, very good example of classical music. Um, it uses a lot of uh, notes from the chord, from the main key. It's very symmetrical. It's got a very clear melody. Uh, the romantic piece, uh, Berlioz's Symphony Fantastique. It's very, very rich in texture. There's lots of orchestral instruments that we've not heard before in the previous eras. And finally, Stravinsky's Rite of Spring. Sometimes a bit of a tough listen if you're hearing it for the first time. Very, very strange, very odd and very experimental. So hopefully that one was quite obvious. Okay, so this is what your finished timeline would look like if we were in school and I'd given you the cards to sort out. Um, so we've got our eras at the top and the years. We've got our historical facts in pink. Then we've got our architecture. architecture. Uh, we've got our pieces of music in yellow. We've got our composers there. And then we've got our musical features. Okay, so this is what your timeline would look like if we were in school. If you want to test yourself and test that I've actually taught you something today, uh, then feel free to go to this YouTube video. Um, it's just a little clip of lots of different pieces of music and you can test yourself and work out whether it's Baroque, classical or romantic. Uh, see if you can justify why as well. So if you think a piece of music is classical, then how do you know it's classical based on what? So has it got a clear melody, for example? OK, um, there's no modern option. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a good example of a, a quiz that included that. So you'll just have to stick to Baroque, Classical and Romantic. So feel free to have a little test, do a test yourself there. Uh, going on to some top tips now. So for the three main elements of your uh, course, this is some top tips from us as staff and also for uh, from our current students. OK, so for performance, practice as much as you can. OK, you're spending a lot of time at home at the moment. Use it to your advantage and try and build up your stamina. OK, for GCSE, you haven't had to perform for this long before. OK, eight minutes is a really, really long time. So get practicing. This one's quite tricky. Get involved with as many ensembles as you can. If you're part of an ensemble that's outside of school and they're doing some kind of virtual performance, just get involved, okay? It's a good opportunity for you to do something different with your instrument and we're not quite sure how ensembles are going to look in September, but hopefully we'll get them running as soon as it's safe. Uh, composing, start thinking about a style of music that you really like, okay? There's nothing worse than composing a piece of music about something that you hate, okay? So think about styles of music that you enjoy listening to, that you enjoy playing, and that you think you could spend a long time working on because your composition will take you a lot of lesson time, okay? And think about styles of music that suit you in terms of your performance ability and instrumental experience, okay? So one good place to start is to write a piece of music for your instrument because you know whether it's playable or not. OK, and then finally, for appraising, try and listen to a wide variety of unfamiliar music. OK, so go on Spotify and just pick a random playlist and listen to it. OK, see if you can find any pieces of music that you think match those six areas of study that we looked at. Uh, practice listening to music and discussing the musical elements, okay? So the musical elements we focus on are context, style and genre, uh, there should be a comma there, sorry, instrumentation, tempo, rhythm and metre, melody, texture, harmony and tonality, structure and dynamics, okay? So can you listen to a piece of music and state a fact about those musical elements, OK, and finally, you do really need to be at least grade five um, in music theory. So make sure your theoretical knowledge is up to uh, up to scratch. OK. So you have three summer tasks, OK, three transition tasks to do over the summer holidays. OK, so number one, prepare a piece of uh, sorry, prepare a performance on the instrument of your choice. Um, this will probably be in your second or third lesson in September. Um, so you don't need to worry about bringing in your instrument on the first day. We'll tell you when this is going to be. Um, it needs to be at least three minutes long and it can be any genre. Please bring in a photocopy of your music for me so I can see that you're uh, following the dots properly. Um, if you require a backing track, uh, then you can bring it in on a CD or USB stick. OK, so get practicing for that. It can be a piece that you've performed in an exam. It can be a, a piece that you just enjoy playing. Um, but yeah, we'll tell you when that when that performance will be when you join. So don't worry about bringing your instrument in on the first day. 
Okay. Uh, number two for listening, find a piece of music from each of these genres or eras. Okay. And these are your uh, areas of study. Okay. So one piece of music uh, from the genre of vocal music, a piece of instrumental music that was composed between 1500 and 1999, a piece of music for film, a piece of pop or jazz music, a fusions piece of music, and a new directions piece of music, okay? And you must explain what musical characteristics of that era are found in that piece and why is a good example of this era, okay? You might be able to use this presentation to help you with that. Uh, this is a written task and the contents will form part of a class discussion. So this is likely to be your first lesson, okay? So if you can come armed with this piece of work to your first music lesson, that would be great. Um, and then finally... Uh, this is just something that you can get revising or refreshing your memories on if you've done grade five theory already. Um, in preparation for your baseline assessment in September, uh, if you could revise some grade five theory, that would be great because we're going to give you a grade five theory paper to sit in one of your first lessons as a baseline test. Um, the AB Guide to Music Book One is useful if you need to brush up on that or you can go uh, to the ABRSM website and there's a link there for you to click on. Okay, final slide. So if you have any questions about the A-Level Music course, feel free to give us an email anytime. Uh, there's Miss Williams's email address and my email address under there. Um, if you're interested in taking up instrumental lessons uh, in school, then you can email Mrs. McArdle and she'll get the process of that going um, ready for September. Also, if you wish to continue your music lessons outside of school, that's absolutely fine. OK, and in the meantime, feel free to follow our social media pages. We've got Facebook, Twitter and Instagram account. Um, it'll be great to see you pop up on there. OK, so if you have any questions, please feel free to give us an email and we look forward to welcome you to our department in September. Thank you.